Hello, Unlimited, and welcome back to the study of the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. What is faithfulness? Simply put, it's sticking with a person or a promise no matter what. A faithful friend will always support you and be there for you. A faithful worker will always show up and do what he or she is supposed to do. Dogs are often considered faithful companions because they're loyal and they'll continue to serve their master. You can tell our society values faithfulness very much. Why do you think that is? I think it's because faithfulness is a quality that God wants us to have, just like the rest of the fruit of the Spirit. He wants us to be faithful because He is faithful. Let's talk about God's faithfulness through the account of Gideon. So after the Israelites came out of Egypt with God's help, crossed the Red Sea with God's help, and finally came to the Promised Land with God's help, they forgot about God. They worshipped other gods of that land and didn't want to give up their evil ways. God was very angry with them, so he let them be overpowered by other people to be ruled by them. But when the Israelites cried out to God for help in their suffering, God raised up a leader to save them. These leaders were called judges, and after they were safe from their enemies and had peace for a while, they went right back on forgetting God and worshipping idols. This happened over and over again. On one occasion, when the Israelites worshipped other gods and did evil in God's sight, God let a group of people called the Midianites take over. Whenever the Israelites planted anything, the Midianites invaded and stole their crops. They would come like swarms of grasshoppers and wipe it all out. This happened for seven years, that the Israelites were so starved. When they finally decided to cry out to God for help, do you think God said, You didn't listen to me and served other gods, so you're getting what you deserve. Good luck. Bye. No. Even when the Israelites were unfaithful to God and did evil things, God remained faithful to them. Whenever they cried out, he raised up a leader to rescue them. This time, he chose Gideon. The angel of God showed up and told Gideon that he was the one to save Israel from the Midianites with God's help. Gideon didn't believe it was God who was speaking to him, so he asked for a sign. He brought an offering of bread, meat, and broth to him, which were quite precious if you remember how their crops were being taken by the Midianites. He was told to put them on a rock, and when the angel touched them with the tip of his staff, fire flared from the rock and burned up everything. Gideon built an altar right there to honor God. That night, just as God told him, he broke down his father's idols and built another altar to God. Later, when the Spirit of God was on him, he gathered the people to fight the Midianites. But then he became doubtful again and asked God for another sign. This time, he wanted to know if God was really going to use him to save Israel as he promised. Gideon said he'll put a piece of wool fleece on the ground, and the next morning, if the fleece is wet with dew but the ground is dry, he will trust God to help him save Israel. What a request! Did God say, Never mind, Gideon, I'm getting someone else who has more faith and who actually trusts me when I say I'll help? No, God simply did what Gideon asked. The next morning, the ground was completely dry, but Gideon could squeeze a bowl full of water from the fleece. And then he asked for another sign. This time, he wanted it the other way around. Dry fleece and wet ground. Aren't we sometimes like that too? When God tells us to do something difficult like being nice to the mean kid or forgiving someone you really don't like, do we say, of course, God, I'll do it right away? That's difficult to say sometimes, isn't it? But God is still faithful. 
He didn't abandon Gideon or become angry at him. He simply did what Gideon needed to see, the dry fleece and the wet ground. Do you sometimes feel like you have little faith? God will meet you at the level of your faith and he will never abandon you. Now when Gideon wasn't too far from the enemy camp, he was told by God that he had too many fighting men. God said to send anyone home who was too scared to fight. God wanted to make it very clear that it would be him fighting for them. Out of the 32,000 people that gathered, 22,000 went home. So only 10,000 were left. But God said that that was still too many. So Gideon sent more people home and was now left with 300 men. Do you know how big their enemy was? 135,000. It looks pretty impossible that Gideon will win from looking at the numbers, but it only looks like that from our perspective. You see, God already decided that he's going to help fight the battle and that the battle will be won. But with only 300 men, Gideon was definitely not feeling brave. Not even with all the signs God gave him and not even with the very words he heard from God, which was, I will be with you. But here's what's so amazing about God. He even cares about Gideon's fears. He said to Gideon, If you're afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Pura and listen to what they're saying. Afterward, you'll be encouraged to attack the camp. I'm so glad God accepts us the way we are and that he's faithful to the promises he makes despite our weaknesses. When we're willing to do what God tells us to do, he will give us what we need. So Gideon snuck up at night to the edge of the enemy camp, just as a man was telling his friend his dream. The man said, I had this dream, and in my dream, a loaf of barley bread came tumbling down into the Midianite camp. It hit a tent, turned it over, and knocked it flat. His friend answered, Your dream can mean only one thing. God has given Gideon the Israelite victory over Midian. When Gideon heard this, he bowed down in worship unto the Lord. God used a dream to put fear in the Midianites, and he knew that's what Gideon needed to hear to be encouraged. What an amazing and faithful God we have who does not abandon us in the moment of our fear. Gideon returned to the Israel camp and called out, Get up! The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. Then he gave everyone a ram's horn and a clay jar with a torch in it. When they got to where their enemies were in the middle of the night, they blew the ram's horns and smashed the jar. With the torches in their hands, they shouted a battle cry. Then they watched as all the Midianites rushed around in a panic. The Bible says, when the 300 Israelites blew their ram's horns, the Lord caused the warriors in the camp to fight against each other with their swords. Those who were not killed fled. The Israelites didn't even have to fight because their enemies ended up fighting each other in the dark. Just as God said, he saved the Israelites and he had it planned all along. And in the same way, God rescued us from sin, and he had it planned all along. He sent his son Jesus to die for us so that we don't have to die for our own sins. And he promises us that if we believe this, we will be saved and be in heaven with him. If he went through the trouble of dying for us so that he can save us, he's never going to leave us. Our memory verse is Deuteronomy 31.8. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Here are your discussion questions. How did God show his faithfulness to Gideon and the Israelites? 
Why would God be faithful to the Israelites when they forgot about him? What should our response be to God's faithfulness? For your shekel activity, please read 2 Thessalonians 3.3, Hebrews 13.5, and Psalm 105. In what ways do each of these verses say God is faithful? Please send your answers to nextgenatthenations.asia to earn your shekels. God is faithful to us even when we are unfaithful to Him. He will never leave us nor abandon us. Have a victorious week in God's love, everyone. Bye!